Hi guys, uh, we are going to continue with the second video or the second session of binomial theorem. In the in the last video, we have seen the basic of binomial theorem. We have seen some observations about binomial theorem. Uh, we have seen uh, what is a general term. We have seen Pascal's triangles and a few things like that. In today's video, we are going to get into the idea of multinomial theorem. That is applying binomial theorem to cases where the variables are more than two. Right. Uh, so very quickly, let's uh, go on. Well, that's that's about me. I think all of you know me. So I'll just skip this part quickly. Right. So what is this multinomial theorem? Multinomial theorem, as I explained in the last class, is basically used to look at the expansion of two or uh, more than two variable to the power of n. It could be three or four or five variables, any number of variables to the power of n. Okay. So when you're looking at the expansion of such a variable, now, like in binomial theorem, you know that this should be something plus something and so on. And every term here should be of the form a coefficient into x to the power of something, x to the power of something, correct? Not zero, let's not call it as zero, power of something into y to the power of something into z to the power of something. Now, because in binomial theorem, I explained that every term will contain the two variables. Here in multinomial theorem also, the first thing you need to understand is every term will contain all the variables. The powers of some of them can become zeros. That's okay. But technically all variables will be present. So when you look at expanding the binomial, uh, multinomial theorem using the multinomial theorem, if you expand this, let us say there are m variables raised to the power of n, then the expansion should look somewhat like this. It is a sigma. Sigma means sum. It is sum of some coefficient will be there, right? Always there will be some coefficient multiplied by the first variable to raised to some power, second variable raised to some other power, and so on and so forth. All variables raised to some power. This is how it should look because that's that's basically how every term will look like as we have seen in binomial theorem. Same thing will exist in multinomial theorem also. But there's a way in which it should look. Now, before we write the entire formula, let us understand few things about the terms which are going to be formed. When it comes to multinomial, in binomial theorem, guys, expansion and remember the expansion is of importance. And we also understood what is happening in each term. When it comes to multinomial theorem, expansion actually is not much of a use mostly you, you don't end up using expansion at all. However, what is very important for you is to make sure that you understand what is happening within each term. That is where our focus is going to be on. Okay. So let's first take three terms and observe what is happening. If I take X plus Y plus Z whole power N, I can group X plus Y together and I will call it as A. Now this becomes a binomial expansion. It is a plus z whole power n. This binomial expansion, I know what to do. It's basically uh, a basic binomial expansion. I know what, what is happening here. This, this is as per the expansion. Now, once I write it, I will take any one term and I'll observe. Let's take the first term. My first term is nc0 a power n, which is nc0 into, now what is a? a is x plus y whole power n. So this itself will become NC zero into now binomial expansion of X plus Y, which is NC uh, zero X power N plus NC one X power N minus one Y and so on up to NC N Y power N. So the first thing you can observe is the coefficient here is not just one combination. It is a product of two combinations because this NC zero is going to get multiplied everywhere. So the coefficient will have a product of two combinations here. That's the first thing you need to observe. 
Let's take another term and understand. Let's take the second term to understand. If I take the second term, just for you to look at, it is nc1 into a power n minus 1 z, which is nc1. Now, z power 1, I will write it as it is. Now, x plus y whole power n, I can write my binomial expansion for x plus y whole power n minus 1. When I do that, I will get n minus 1 c 0 and x power n minus 1 plus n minus 1 c 1 x power n minus 2 y plus n minus 2 c 2 uh, x power n minus 3 y square and so on up to n minus 1 c n minus 1 y to the power of n minus 1. Now if you expand this, this will become nc1 into n minus 1 c0, correct? And x power n minus 1. Now y is not there, so I will write y power 0 and z power 1. Second term here will become nc1 into n minus 1 c1. Okay? And x power n minus 2 y and z like this if i write the last term it will be nc1 into n minus 1 c n minus 1 and uh, x is not there so i'll write x power 0 y power n minus 1 and z power 1 so what do you observe from this this is what you'll, your entire second term will be so long then there will be a third term like this fourth term so that's the reason why i said the expansion is not very important to you it's very very long but observation of every term, how will it look? What all will be there in that? That is of importance to us. So what is the first observation? Your first observation is that sum of the powers is always equal to n. Sum of the powers is always equal to, I'll just erase this part for you to look at it. Okay, so sum of the powers is always equal to n. You can see n minus two, y power one, z power one. X power zero, n minus one, z power one. If you look at the previous term, okay, if you look at the previous in this, here z is not there, but x plus y whole power n automatically inside this expansion, every term will be adding up to uh, power n. So basically sum of x power, y power, z power should be equal to n, just like in binomial theorem. It is very similar, right? Let's look at the second observation. The coefficient now it is not a single coefficient which means it is not one nc it is now two ncs and they are of the form nck into n minus k cp okay so basically it is in the form of two uh, terms so if you notice it is nc1 and n minus 1 c1 so if this is k then it will be n minus k if you look at the first in the first uh, term if you look at it nc0 into it is nc0 x power n plus nc0 x power n minus 1 and y and so on. So the multiplication here is nc0 into nc0. So because this is 0, n minus k became n itself. Correct? So this is how the terms will be, the, the coefficient will be. It's a product of two combinations. Right? If I want to, if, if you want to uh, see the third term, what will be the third term or third term will be nc2 a power n minus 2 z square, correct? Which is nc2 into, now z square I will write it as it is, z square into, it is x plus y whole power n minus 2. Now every time inside the bracket it will be n minus 2 c something. And outside the bracket is it, it is nc2. So if you notice, this is your k and this is your k minus n minus k. So every time the product will be of the form nck and n minus k c p. That's how it's going to be. Right? Now the next thing, uh, the next observation, let's take a look at what is the next observation. Now with this we already discussed every term x, y, z raised to the sum power k, l and m. The sum of the power should always be equal to m. The sum of the power should always be equal to n. 
KL and the powers of the variable should always be equal to N. Now, the fourth is about the number of terms. Now, this is very interesting. So, the number of terms, remember guys, so in, in the first, somewhere if I get x square, uh, let us say I'm writing x plus y plus z whole power 10. Now, when I expand this, the number of terms depend on how many different ways I can write x power something, y power something and z power something in distinct ways. So for example, if I write x square y cube z power 5 and if I have another some coefficient here and somewhere else I'm getting the same x square y cube z power 5, this will not be counted as two terms. They will end up getting added, correct? They will end up getting added. So my unique terms, my unique terms will basically are those which cannot be clubbed together, which cannot be added, which means my x power, y power and z power cannot be uh, same. So uh, when I say they cannot be same, the point is how many different ways can I write x power, y power and z powers? How many different ways can I write x power, y power and z powers? Because if I, if I say x power 1, y power 6 and z power 4 or z power 3 because uh, it is x plus y plus z whole power 10. In this, if a term like this exists, any other term like this which comes in the expansion will be clubbed together. All of them will be clubbed and all the coefficients will get added and I'll get a final coefficient. I will get a final coefficient. Similarly, if I have x square, y square, z power 6, all such terms will be clubbed and the coefficient will be a single coefficient. So my number of terms depends on how many ways can I write the powers as the total as n. So if I say my term will have x power k, y power l and z power m, how many ways can I write k plus l plus m the total equaling to n. Depending upon how many I can write those many terms I'll have. For example, few of the examples, the terms can be 1 or rather, let's look at the smallest, 0, 0 and 10, this is one term possible, 0, 1 and 9, 0, 2 and 8 and so on. Similarly, I can write 1, 0, 9, 1, 1, 8, like this I can write all terms. So like this, all of them are going to be different, different terms because they cannot be further clubbed together. Clearly, none of these terms are going to be common with any of the terms here. This will never be common with any of 0, 2, 0, 8, 2, 1, 7. None of these will be common. So because these are all distinct terms, that will be the total number of terms. So my question now becomes, how many ways can I write k plus l plus m equaling to n? Right? So depending upon how many ways I can write. So it's the addition of all of these number of ways. Now this, thankfully, you don't have to write down everything or count everything. You have a formula for this, which comes from your permutation and combination. Okay. So we will see what is the formula that will be coming uh, for the number of terms. Right. So that's what we're going to calculate next. How many terms are there in this expansion? So you know that each term will be of the form variable and its power, another variable and its power and so on and so forth. Correct. So I already explained the total number of terms is the number of ways of writing the powers such that the sum of the powers is equivalent to n. The sum of the powers is equivalent to n. So the number of ways of writing this becomes your answer. And thankfully from your permutation and combination, we have a formula for this. It is the answer for number of non-negative integral solutions for variables total equal to n. If you, if you remember your PNC or if you haven't done your PNC, please wait for it to be completed. If you have done your PNC, you should be knowing this. It is basically the number of non-negative integral solutions formula. Because remember, all these powers are positives or zeros and they should be adding up to n. So that is your logic. Okay. 
right? So the number of terms is given by n plus m minus one c m minus one, right? Now, if you're looking at the coefficient of a term, how will the coefficient of a term look like? So if you want to find the coefficient of this, there is a direct simple formula for this, and it is given by this formula. So if you want to find the any particular coefficient of a term, it is given by n factorial divided by the power factorials, product of all the powers and their factorials. Which means, let's look at this. If I look at x plus y plus z whole power 15, and I want the coefficient of x power 5, y power 7, and uh, z power 3. Make sure that the total adds up to 15. Okay, then the answer is given by 15 factorial by 5 factorial, 7 factorial, and 3 factorial. Right, if I want to find the coefficient of, let's say I want to find the coefficient of x power 6, y power 6, z power 3, then this coefficient becomes the coefficient here, what you get becomes 15 factorial by 6 factorial, 6 factorial. 3 factorial. Okay, this is the final factorial. After adding all similar terms like this, the resultant is this factorial. You don't have to worry about similar terms getting added anymore because the formula takes care of addition of the like terms. Okay, right. So that's about the coefficient of any particular term that you want. Okay, now uh, you might be thinking, why have we not yet discussed the expansion? And if you're insisting, as I kept mentioning, it is not really required, but if you're really insistent upon it, this is how the formula looks. This expansion is this. It's an unnecessarily lengthy formula, which basically tells you that it is the addition of, you will look at n factorial by let us say the first one will be, uh, okay, if I want to write this, let me take this and write for three variables, x plus y plus z whole power 10. Now my different terms, first of all, let me write down all the different terms, x power 0, y power 0, z power 10, correct? Next will be x power 1, uh, sorry, x power 0, y power 1, z power 9. Next term will be x power 0, y square, z power 8, like this. You have to write all of them and the coefficients are given by, if you remember the coefficient formula, it is 10 factorial by 0 factorial, 0 factorial and 10 factorial. Here the coefficient will be 10 factorial, 0 factorial, 1 factorial and 9 factorial. Here the uh, coefficient will be 10 factorial, 0 factorial, 2 factorial, 8 factorial and so on. You keep writing all of them. That's what the formula means. So keep writing all different, different powers. And based on the powers, you write your respective coefficients. That is the entire expansion. That is why I said you don't use this ever in your problems. But what you use in the problems is number of terms. How do you calculate the coefficient of a particular term? Uh, observation about the sum of the powers always being equal to constant, which is n. These are the things which you use in the problem solving. Right, friends? So that's multinomial theorem for you. I hope it was interesting. In the next session, we will take up few applications of what we have just learned. And that will be the last video. Right? Thank you. See you in the next session.